Hey there internet, welcome to the Hard on Gear channel where I discuss and review my used and abused knives and gear. Unboxing time is upon us again and this was the very first knife recommendation I got when I started this channel. The Glock Field Knife. So I planned on getting this months ago, but when I went to order it, it was not available in Canada on like any website that I could find. So I still didn't get the version I was hoping to get, which is, this is the Sawback version. I was recommended against getting that by a couple of people in the comments section, so I appreciate that. Unfortunately, this is what I could get, limited supply in Canada. And we'll see if this is the weaker version. I'll find out, maybe I'll get the non-Sawback version at some point. Typically you get the 78 and the 81 for the years that they were designed. I think the 78 was the first one without the sawback. The 81 has the sawback. This is technically the Glock field knife, whatever, slight like a modern uh, reproduction version of that or something. I think it's basically the same knife. It's just they're, it's under a different model name. Yeah, right there. So the Glock OEM field knife with root saw. So I'm not exactly sure what the OEM is. Somebody in the comments want to let me know, that'd be great. So we'll open this up with the last fixed blade I unboxed, the Mora Garberg. So you can check out that unboxing video in the link up in the corner right here. It might be the first thing actually, other than the piece of oak that this thing is cut. So let's just, oh yeah, oh yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, just didn't want to launch my hand through the wall if that let go too quick. So, uh, nothing too special on the packaging here. Like the Mora knife, it comes in this plastic kind of, uh, not, it's not quite clamshell, but crappy plastic packaging. Just because they make them in such bulk numbers that they want to lower the cost in their packaging, I'm getting to pay a little bit less for a knife if they're going to save on that stuff. So I don't need a fancy box. If you give me a piece of quality gear like this for, I think about 60, 70 bucks Canadian is all you're gonna pay for this. So you're looking at around 40 bucks American, somewhere's in that ballpark. The different versions of this all pretty much cost the same from what I can see. And in Canada, like I said, always, you're gonna pay a little bit more for the exchange rate and sometimes just the logistics of getting the knife here and supply and demand and all that jazz. But this was, again, in my very first video I released, which was the 1211K bar review. Check that one out here in the top corner if you're interested. That was, I got a comment on that one from a fellow named Wyvern. I apologize, Wyvern, for taking this long to get it, but I'll be putting this to the test, trying it out, and let's take a look and see if I don't cut myself figure, figuring out how this thing comes out of the sheath. Oh, this is in there pretty tight, so there's good retention. Uh -huh, it's 100% just like a little thumb ramp. So this is, looks like at least, an ambidextrous sheath. Right now it's in right hand draw, I believe. So that's a little press with the thumb before you draw that. It sure looks like it, holy crap. So that's got some damn good retention, but there it is. Okay, oh, okay, so very, very, very thin little blade. So this was the original Glock product, I do believe. And this is made out of a spring steel. It's basically similar to 1095 high carbon steel, except this is something they would make uh, big old heavy leaf springs out of. Basically another non-stainless high carbon steel that is coated in oil and coated with some kind of, I don't think that's DLC, I'm assuming that's just black paint. You'll notice at the hilt here that one of the hand guards at the top is actually kind of round, or not rounded off, but bent at 90 degrees. This was actually, and is designed to be, the bayonet for the AUG rifle. Now, I'm not a huge gun nut or anything like that, but I'll post a picture up here. Anyone who's played any Call of Duty or anything like that should probably recognize the model. And this is a Austrian uh, firearm, and this is an Austrian knife. That military issue, this is supposed to be the bayonet for that gun. And if any of that's wrong, I know a lot of you are much more into the tactical knives and guns and all that than I am, so feel free to comment away down below. Wow, what a snap putting that back in the sheath. So this feels amazing. And again, for the price of it, this is comparable to what you're gonna pay for like an Aussie Rat 1, Rat 2. Uh, yeah, capable, I think so. Not full tang by the looks of things. So like the K-Bar and a lot of other military knives. Mm, full tang would be nice. Is it really necessary? Probably not. Could you get away with a lot more if it was? I think so. And I'm, I might be speaking too soon. I mean, it definitely thins down a little bit because you can see that the handle gets narrow, uh, more narrow than what the base of the blade is here. So it definitely narrows down to like a little bit of a, a rat tail tang or whatever you want to call it. But compared to the actual size of the knife, probably still not that weak. I'm sure it's not terribly thin at that, uh, what, you, what I would consider to be the break point. We'll test it out. We'll see how it does over time. No doubt this is meant to be a bayonet though, because that skinny blade is meant to penetrate. That saw on there, ooh, 
That would cause some serious damage on the way in and out. Pretty thick, you're not gonna wanna do a lot of like fine sawing through like a log or anything like that. But yeah, you could definitely cut through a root or any kind of uh, coarse material. But I've heard people review this and say that the saw is definitely not the best. I'll grab my trusty piece of oak here, but this thing's not supposed to do for you what other, well, yeah, no. It's, it's cutting into this, but you can tell this is definitely not the tool you're gonna wanna use for this job. Uh, a saw like something on like a Leatherman or a multi-tool, a hundred times quicker you're gonna get through that piece of wood. Batoning, uh, I'm not gonna try it with this because I don't really wanna, I just kinda wanna see what this edge can do first before I go and, uh, oh, I'm pretty sharp. Yeah, not quite laser like a new Spyderco, but pretty damn good uh, for a high carbon steel blade with a good bl thick blade stock like that. Speaking of blade stock and all that, let's just do some quick measurements on this thing. So the sheath is the coolest thing about this, and even from the beginning before I ever had this in my hands, you could just tell this is gonna be a super nice carry. Very low profile, very thin, uh, pretty secure looking on the belt, and it's like got, it's got this uh, double clip, so you can, I think, slide it on vertically. Yeah, and lock it into place, so no issues with this. Solid, solid, jeez, maybe too solid. Yeah, solid sheath, solid sheath. As for the knife itself, which again, basically doesn't get much larger with the sheath, you're looking at, holy smokes, 11 inches, and about six and a half inches of blade length, with, looks like about five and a half inches of actual cutting, uh, cutting surface on it. So you've got a little bit of, not quite a sharpening choil, I guess where the blade grind thickens up towards the base. Full flat grind, the, uh, I guess, yeah, technically a high saber grind, high saber flat grind, but that uh, first bevel starts just where the uh, base of the sawtooth comes in, and then there's a clip point with a swedge just at the tip here for maximum penetration, because again, this is supposed to be a bayonet. So that blade was six and a half inches, that means the handle is the remaining four and a half, yeah, yeah, maybe a little over four and a half, but about four and a half inches of handle. That is, I believe, a polymer, the same as the sheath made of polymer, like both well, the Glock pistols. I'm assuming this is pretty much the same or very similar material, but extremely durable, dense, hard use approved uh, plastic compound of some sort. There's different grades of polymers, I believe, but this is uh, Glock, and I'm assuming they're pretty much just using the best quality stuff. Now, what are we looking at for weight? 6.98, okay. And the sheath, 1.56 for a total combined weight of 8.56 ounces. So, makes it, I believe, a little bit lighter than the Moore Garberg. No, about the, yeah, wow. Ooh, oh, where are we going here? Let me make sure I get all this knife on here. So, 8.55. 8.7, yeah, so just a touch lighter than the Mora Garberg. So a little bit stockier, definitely uh, more durable, thicker blade stock, a little bit longer, still thick and rugged, uh, but with these, these two are, wow, definitely more of my style of fixed blade, which I know a lot of you old school dogs are just saying like, ah, what a freaking loser. I know this tactical stuff does not appeal to a lot of people. I am a sucker for Kydex and tight little waterproof packages like this and I know that leather is in a lot of people's opinion more durable and more reliable I'm just not much of a leather guy and I haven't had much luck with it in the past I prefer stuff like this I know some of the stuff's cheap and breaks easily that's why I'm trying to find a lot of these let's say a smaller package lower profile knives and sheaths feel like this is going to have a little bit less chance of snag and getting caught up on my gear so yeah, these two will definitely get a comparison video at some point in the future. I think I'm figuring the sheath out and I'm pretty sure it is just as you draw it, you're just supposed to with your finger push on that clip a little bit or on it with your thumb, I guess, but it's definitely gonna need to be broken in because gah, yeah, it doesn't take much to be hit at the right angle, but it's uh, secure. It ain't getting out of that sheath at all. I'm gonna get these sheaths out of the way and do some size comparison. So there is that Glock. OEM field knife. There's the more Garber, again about the same handle length but much shorter blade. Here's the more companion knife, about a little bit smaller but about the same size as the Garberg. And we'll throw the Cold Steel SRK just on the top. I know these are similar but just that extra couple inches of blade really does make me happy. Take away the SRK and we will replace it with the 
Groman knives, number one design, which a lot of my fellow East Coast Canadian folks will recognize this thing, and a lot of you probably have a similar knife to this, or maybe the number two or three design. So there's the Groman, and we'll slip these mores away and replace them with the Bradford Guardian 3 and the Essie Azula 2, getting into a little more EDC fixed blade size. And speaking of smaller fixed blades, you want a little comparison, there's the Glockfield knife versus the CRKT Minimalist, which is about the size of the handle of the Glockfield knife. And we'll give it a couple folder comparisons. So there's the AD15, which is about as big and tanky of the knife as you're gonna see, but just a little guy compared to that Glockfield knife and just the Spyderco Paramilitary to give you a little bit of a size reference. My intended use for the Glockfield knife is, I don't know, say it was suggested to me as something, as an alternative to the K-Bar 1211. So we'll see. And since there's a comparison, I guess I should probably not be lazy and go out and get my 1211. So there's that USMC knife from K-Bar. That's kind of what I was, well, the comparison was made between these two. You can probably see why. Pretty similar in length, except the K-Bar is definitely a bigger package, a little more knife, definitely a little better chopping, chopping capability out of this, but very similar. And we're gonna give the Glock Field Knife a try, see if I like it the same, a little bit better, a little bit worse than what I've used here for many, many years, the K-Bar 1211. I've certainly got fixed blades that I prefer over the K-Bar USMC. However, I've got probably just as much or more use with this than almost any other fixed blade in my collection. So this is uh, one that I'm very familiar with. Using a smaller and I'm assuming slightly less capable version of it might be a little disappointing for me, but maybe the trade-off of the little bit less weight, a little bit less size might be worth it. And it is just a different knife. And man, against something like a bear attack, coyote attack, hmm, this is made to be a fighting knife and you the weight and a little bit of extra blade is definitely nice and comfortable, but boy, you're gonna really get some sweet penetration deep and through any kind of small spaces with the Glock Field Knife. If that's what you're buying this knife for, which I don't recommend, because on the Hog Channel, I am not recommending the use or modification of any knives as weapons or anything for tactical weaponry combat -y purposes, because that is not allowed, and YouTube police listen to me when I say that's not what I'm talking about, but I am in the woods, and sometimes you run into the bears and coyotes and all kinds of unpleasant stuff that, while normally isn't gonna be an issue, wrong place, wrong time, you might have to use this tool as a self-defense tool. Just saying. But hey, if you like this video, give me a like. Appreciate it, the channel appreciates it, and more people will see the video. If you wanna buy this knife or some of the other ones that were on the table here, feel free to check out the Amazon affiliate links down below, and you can click through those links to order these knives or anything else that you're buying, and a little kickback comes back to the channel. So I like to get several months of use before I start doing reviews of knives, just so I can give you a real good honest opinion on it. In the meantime, feel free to check out unboxings for some of these different fellows right here, like the SRK, Mora Garberg, or the Cold Steel AD15, rah, which I'm still getting used to. That Scorpion lock is a whole lot of fun. And this is, well, geez, probably my favorite folding knife right now. Just awesome. And there are some very full, thorough, and complete reviews of these knives on the channel as well, so feel free to check out that playlist at the end screen here. So thank you for your time and attention. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for your support. This is the Hard On Gear channel, signing off.